we're getting this thing out of here today. You ready to get it out? No more going in and out of the window, okay? What we're doing is making marking sticks. We know our finished floor, we wanna do like three quarters of an inch. So we're kind of going off of that to determine our base coat height. We are in our bathroom. Where we just absolutely know where our finished floor needs to be. So we mark three quarters of an inch up from our finished floor height where our toilet flange is. We're just gonna use that as our guide. Mark it all now. That way we have that guide along our edges when we're pouring tomorrow. And then we'll also have this marking stick to use tomorrow. We're gonna give it a whirl. We haven't ever done this before, but we also want to be able to show you guys the our process, process, our process. Yeah. Let our mistakes be your lessons. Yeah. Right? We are actually going to go with a half inch top coat instead of the three quarter inch that we initially said. We realized all the way around our house we're about an inch and a half where thickness of what we need to make our floor. So we would like our base coat thicker than our top coat. Gonna make our marks all the way along the edges of our walls here. Snap a chalk line just so we have a reference guide as I'm pouring the floor. We also lifted up our island in that so that we're able to pour underneath it. The fields of our pots, feelings out our ways, keeping us close but strange now. Dreams holding us closer. You know what we gotta do next with the bobcat? Just wanted to get an idea of how much clay is in the soil. You want at least 20% of your soil to have clay in it, less than 30% of it to have the silt in it. We just added some water in with this, shake it up, and let it sit for about 15 minutes. The clay is going to sink to the bottom, and then it'll be sand and silt on top. It's mostly all clay. We're good to go with our soil sample. We kind of already have our recipe figured out from the past two years of making experiments with the kids. So we're gonna do three parts sand to one part soil for our base coat, and then we also have our water in our straw. Kind of the idea figured out where to see with our first batch here and make adjustments from there. While I got the straw all chopped up, we got a good portion of everything ready to go. Now we just need to start mixing and pouring.
There's not many kids that say they get to put dirt in their on their floor. You're pretty lucky. You ready? This is what 20 minutes in has gotten us. And the help of Connor. Hey. We have reference points marked where our laser level needs to be. And then we still have our line marked where we want our finished floor to be right now. We're checking there. We realize we were really high in some spots and we had to take it down. We didn't get our whole floor done today like we wanted. Our first three hours it goes so slow that would have really helped. Yeah, we were just trying to get the hang of everything. And our mud was so stiff. We did end up adding more water in the last half of the day. And it's going way faster having more water. We can actually move the material. Yeah, it seems like it yeah. goes down a lot easier. For sure, we can spread it out quicker. We're using a laser level more too. I would highly recommend a laser level for marking everywhere. Yeah. That went way better than when we first started with just the level. In 10 hours, we have about 1,400 square feet of floor to lay. And we're over halfway, probably two thirds of the way done. Hopefully we can finish it tomorrow night, but that's what that's you're thinking. That's a stretch too. Yeah. And it's getting dark at night quicker, so it's hard to see when we're mixing. And, but we can maybe set something up to where we can keep going. It'd be nice because you really don't want any cold joints. Yeah, we wanted this all done in one day, but Oh, yeah. Hopefully our second coat, yes. uh, we can get it done in a yeah, day. Yeah, and then we'll have to plan for that. Other than that, I mean, the mixer's doing really well, surprisingly. We did break a belt, have to go get one of those. But uh, it's working out really well. We're tired. <laughs> we'll go back at it tomorrow. <laughs> Since we only have about two hours of sunlight now after work, Wiley is just gonna keep mixing and we'll just probably pour the batches down on our floor. That way I, he can keep moving and mixing and I'll just keep working on the floor. Hopefully he doesn't have to mix so much in the dark because it's hard to see out there. We don't have much lighting. We wanna get this thing done tonight. We have probably like three hours that we wanna get it done in. We still have a whole two rooms and part of the living room in here to finish. Our last batch for the night.
1040 at night. We just got finished with our floors. It went pretty well. Um, a lot of a lot of batches of mud that you mix. Holy crap. Yeah, Teresa laid all the mud on the floor. <laughs> just not stop. Mixing, mixing. It's crazy. Um, In some spots we're like really, really thin and then to some spots we're really, really thick. Yeah, over an inch I'd say in some spots. <sighs> Um, and then we got it really pretty level, so our next coat is going to be straight half inch all the way through, give or take a yeah. little bit, but not much at all. So we're hoping to finish our next coat all in one pour one day. That way there's no cold joints. I'm tired. <laughs> Let's give them a... Yeah. Let's go home. Laura's been drying for about five days now. It's actually really hard. The kids love it. We love it. Plan to do our second coat again in a couple days, and that coat is obviously going to look much better than this coat. We have trowel marks right now showing. With our second coat, we will be burnishing it, creating a really solid, smooth, shiny finish. Is it hard? <laughs>